wide open. Hits a triple. Wow. San Diego team not real happy with what they perceive to be some missed calls there. But you got to keep fighting and scrapping to get those loose balls on the defensive rebound. Poor floor spacing thus far in this possession for San Diego. Indeed, just about turns it over. Has to go to the deck. Finds Brown cutting back door, who lays it off to Mafra and a foul call. Wow. What a great play by Ginty after making a terrible play to go to the deck to keep his wits about him. And find Brown going back door. Mafra shoots free throws when we return. Your Buick. All right. Here in Spokane, number 25, Gonzaga with a 21-13 lead. Their last offensive bucket had Bill Greer upset. Yeah, it really did. You look at a mad scramble. Watch Jeremy Pargo, a little out of control. That's a great setup by Rob Jones. Should have gotten the charge call. He's got to get up off the floor and try to box out Micah Downs, which leads to a wide-open layup by Pargo. And in a game this close with this few of points scored, that's a huge play in the first half. Roberto Mafra. The Brazilian product, only been speaking English for about two years. Went to Southeastern Community College in Iowa before coming to, to San Diego. And in talking with Bill Greer about the challenges of coaching Mafra, he said, you know, he, he speaks such broken English that it's hard for him sometimes to retain the team concepts of everything that's being taught. But a very smart young man. He actually said he was surprised at how quickly sometimes he was able to pick up on what they were doing considering his limited grasp of the language. Well, and he looks like he's got great feel for the game, so it doesn't come hard for him. And when you put basketball players in positions to be successful, they usually are. Argo rises and connects. Well, if there's one knock on that young man's game, it's a consistent outside jumper. He can develop that. Could be looking at an NBA career. Door hits a big three from the corner, though, for San Diego, and the lead's down to five. See, again, we talked about it, Bob. San Diego choosing, picking and choosing their spots when they push the ball up. They've been very good at it. Beautiful spin move by Pargo, and he scores on back-to-back -back trips. Jeremy Pargo just overpowering Door at the hole. Such a tough matchup. One of the reasons it made him West Coast Conference Player of the Year last year. Jones drives it, shovels off to Palmer, wide open, he pulled the string. Tipped around, though, and a foul called on Jones. So we'll walk the other way, and I think Micah Downs will be shooting free throws. As that is team foul number nine. Later on tonight, Saturday Night Primetime continues on ESPN with a battle in the SEC. It's the Gators and Volunteers at 9 Eastern, Florida and Tennessee. Saturday Night Primetime presented by DirecTV later on tonight on ESPN at 9 Eastern. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. It's a one and one for Micah Downs, who spent 2005-2006 with Kansas and averaged a little over four points in 13 games with the Jayhawks, but then the second semester that year came to Gonzaga, so... Last season was Downs' first full year with the Zach. Yeah, and again, Micah Downs one of those unique players that you don't see a lot of in college basketball any longer. The 6'7", six, 6'8", six, wing players. You know, a lot of those guys typically leave early. You don't see him around college basketball a lot, but he's very athletic, very skilled at that 6'7", six, 6'8", six, wing position. So he could be an X factor if Gonzaga wants to fulfill what some people think could be a Final Four run this year. There at the line for Downs. Rob Jones with two fouls now sits down. Chris Lewis comes on for the last minute of the half. And again, problems with the pressure for San Diego. One thing you see in college basketball are players leaving their feet to make a pass. I think that comes from AAU basketball in high school. It's a terrible trend in college basketball, and you see it almost every game. 
Mark few calls a timeout. That timeout you can't take with you to the second half to set up what might be the last possession for the Bulldogs here in the first half. And Gonzaga as of Thursday night was where in your best of the West and where are they now the Zags at number three as far as your top ten in the West. Yeah they were number three and I, I caught a little heat because UCLA was ranked behind them but that's why they call it Bartles best in the West. <laughs> <laughs> well now let's adjust it as of today with everything that's happened over the past couple of days. Yeah and UCLA and Gonzaga now tied for first Arizona State in a dog fight. Watch Utah State moved up very quickly and that's an outstanding team. Stu Morrill does a fantastic job. Portland State dropping because they got a loss against Montana. All right, just for consistency's sake, I think at least we should point this out. No team stayed where you had them on Thursday night. You moved every team in the top 10 at least one spot. Because there were four losses in the top 10. <laughs> and so if you if you hold if you hold serve and someone loses it in front of you, you have a chance to move up. I'm just I'm proud you have such strong convictions. As Gray comes up short on the three ball and it goes over the backboard. So with 30 seconds to go on the half, San Diego can hold for one. Well, you know, I got to have something, man, because all we get is a big piece of chicken. You know what I'm saying, Bob? As, as fathers, we only get the big piece of chicken. So I got I to hold on to Bardo's best of the West as much as I can. Boy, Chris Lewis, ooh, a little shaky right there on the handle. And now a foul called on Goodson for reaching in. That's only team foul number six for the Bulldogs, though. They had one to give. Wow, what a quick pressing lineup on the floor right now for Gonzaga. Ira Brown, Goodson, Pargo, Bolden, and Micah Downs. You talk about quick on quick at all five positions. Johnson tried to shake and bake the dribble, and Goodson called for the foul. Wow, Goodson dove for the loose ball, and it appeared as if Johnson jumped on top of him. Well, Johnson being a little cute right there. And Demetri Goodson showing you some of that football background out of Texas. Goes after that rock with reckless abandon. So that will put Tremaine Johnson at the line to shoot one and one. Normally, Bob, if, if you're Coach Few, you'd be a little upset with that foul at that point, but. You can't be upset with that effort right there and the defense that Goodson laid down. Well, I think Mark Few was upset. I don't think he was upset at Dimitri Goodson, though. There you go. <laughs> there you go. I don't think he was upset at the striped shirts for making the call. Missing the front end, though, is Johnson. So now a chance for the Bulldogs to shoot the final shot of the first half. Holden launches, comes up short. It's loose. Pargo before the buzzer gets it off. And it's no good. So it's a nine point lead at halftime for the Zags over San Diego. As we take a look at our Star Watch update, Gino Palmer scored, scored the first two field goals for San Diego and managed only two free throws the rest of the first half. Unbelievable half defensively for Gonzaga. A nine point lead for Gonzaga at halftime over San Diego. Now it's time to join Ryan Burr and Jay Williams. They're standing by in our studios with the Dick Sporting Goods halftime report. Ryan. Spokane, Bob Wachusen and Stephen Bardo at the base of some unwell people. Actually, this is one of the great student sections right behind you here in Spokane yeah. at the McCarthy Center in all of college basketball. We didn't see the greatest basketball in the first half of this one, yet on the road, in spite of a bad first half,